Buongiorno. It's one Wednesday. It's Wednesday, and it is pouring. Uh, well, that's actually kind of impressive. Yeah, I saw that. That's it's beautiful. Nature's healing by trying to plant seeds. And grow trees out of your. Truck. Grow trees out of Willie, which should be probably the least surprising thing to happen, Willie, at this point. Uh, we're back with more Taco Preza and less motion sickness, I promise. Um, guest host is currently in bed. Uh, so we are out here doing some fun stuff. And by fun stuff, we mean... Make it more bigger. More bigger, more better. Why use many word when little word do trick? And make it shitted. Yes. Shitted is the theme of the day. For those unaware with uh, the glorious a adjective, would, we sh would should it be an adjective or a verb? Don't ask me that. I think it's a little bit of both, it's right? Terrible because it's, it's both an act and a descriptive word, right? I don't fucking know. Neither do I. Uh, anyways, we're making stuff more shitted so that it can be shitted, and we're doing that with some Anderson what? design fabrication Anderson design fabrication not sponsored or anything just that is what it is and it says ADF on the uh, Anderson design and fabrication look at that that's what it says right on there uh, the problem that we have is that this stuff is designed to work with stock stuff and we slapped in some Forrester quick struts. Which is another three inches on top of this crap. Yes. Uh, so, we got hard tube. Very thick, very manly. Girthy hard tube. Uh, we decided as a consensus that before we put the freshly, hopefully, working now motor back into El Vehiculo, uh, it would probably behoove us to install things like subframe spacers, transmission spacers, control arm spacers, all of that, right? Because we did the suspension aspect of this lift and now we need to do the body aspects to correct the suspension geometry. Why do you need to correct the suspension geometry? Well, Brad, we need to correct the suspension geometry because the wheels fit like shit. So part of that rubbing issue that we have, see how the wheel is, the, the whole caster center line is shifted forward. I don't even know if caster center line is the appropriate term, but it definitely impacts caster. I don't even know if rear wheels have caster. Wow. But it's close on that side. It's far on that side. We need it to be more in the middle here, right? So this is a multi-link suspension. So we got to put some spacer blocks in it. We're going to drop the rear subframe to put some blocks in it too. That's what some of that stuff is over there fix the camber. Yep, to basically to fix the alignment. Um, because right now the suspension everything is just keeping everything basically a max travel from where it is. So we need to correct that so that when you're driving down the road and you hit a bump, you don't end up like Dale. Girth. It's what for dinner. Manwich. What was the the manwich? Manwich? <clears throat> what was the um Shitty TV, the 90s TV dinner commercial. No, it was like beef, it's what's for dinner. Oh, no, it's coming. I think it was Manwich. Maybe. I don't remember. Fuck that, I remember. I'll put it somewhere around I here. Remember, where's I remember. the beef? Yeah. Where's the beef? Uh, so, yeah, so we're doing that. Uh, what is our goal for this evening? Chop of the parts, figure out the bolts we need to order. Maybe weld some shit up. A little bit of focus on the front end. Figure out how much we have to cut this so we can uh, have steering again. Oh, that fun shit. Yeah, do we ever figure out? Like, we got a, I might have a tube. I bet, you know what? I bet you that piece of pipe right there will fit right over that shank. Maybe. Use some galvanized. Hey. This and more. What is, why do you hit galvanized? I don't know how hard it is. That's fair. It's, I mean, it's normally just mild steel with the galvanized coating. Ah, oh, that'll be fine. Yeah. It's only my steering. <laughs> yeah. We'll, like, triple weld it. Some spot weld and some pins and shit. That'd be fine. 
We'll figure it out. Shit it. Can't be that nice. So yeah, so we're gonna make some brackets, do some stuff. Hey all you cool cats and kittens. Welcome back to Taco Present 4. Uh, we're in the middle of building a lift kit. Uh, to this point, we have created some subframe spacers. Uh, this is two by two, quarter inch wall, ERW, nothing fancy, mild steel. Um, that we built out the very slow way on the mill. And then when we got to the cubes, I said, this is gonna fucking take forever. Let's try the plasma cutter, YOLO. And we are blasting through these things. Um, of course, the plasma cutter, I'm not very, I'm, I am not Pablo Picasso. Uh, actually, Pablo Picasso, Pablo Picasso probably couldn't draw a perfect circle either. And I bet that he couldn't do it with a plasma cutter either. Uh, although, fun fact about Picasso, he just died in like the 60s or 70s, I think. He was, yeah, like he actually lived a lot more recently than I think we all think that he did. Um, so we are making some spacer cubes right now. These 2x2x2 two by two by two cubes are for the rear front lower control arm stud uh, and for the transmission mount. And these are basically going to, we're going to get some extended bolts. Um, I think these are M12s or M14s. M14s. On, M14s, those are M12s. Um, just in a longer length and basically use these blocks to space out to correct our suspension geometry and to give us that additional two inches of lift. Um, so, anchors away. Right? Yeah. Spackles. Bone hot. Stab, stab, stab. Forbidden Tic Tacs. Forbidden Tic Tacs. Whew. So what we'll do now is uh, basically take this guy with its roughed in hole and just take it over the mill and finish mill it. Because um, why work smarter when you can work harder? That's how we do it in the breakout bar. Right? Word. I'm going to show the bolts we're replacing. Uh, you get to deal with my stupid ass dialogue. So we are trying to lower this bushing down two inches. This plate has to stay on top. Goes in here, like so. Gets bolted in. Never sees on everything, which is good, because uh, Subarus suck. Need to replace these bolts. Uh, they need to be two inches longer than they are so that they can thread in and that stud needs to come out and be replaced with a bolt that is gonna be two inches longer than that. Welcome back to Jackass, or do it live. Uh, so we're literally just touching these off with a very bit, just getting them centered, not even, I mean, they don't have to be pretty, right? You see my kind of janky holes. Just clean them up. Check that fashion. I should put my bib on. I mean apron. That one's still hot. Because my glove is smoking while touching it. <laughs> this one is warm. I'm just waiting for your sleeve to get into the, the bit. My sleeve? <laughs> it's leather. It'll protect me. Do the best to center it. Take the handle off. Wrong, wrong direction, it's that time of night. We'll go this way, ugly hole. Make it less ugly. Basically just cut the slag right off the walls and just rounding out the hole a little bit. That's fine. All it needs to be, it doesn't need to be pretty. It's gonna live under the car. The alternative to this was I spent, I don't know, probably, probably an hour, hour block. Yeah. Um, Easily. Making everything critical measurements and all that kind of crap. Uh, the difference with the front subframe blocks is that we had two holes that we actually had to line up and make sure that they fit 
Um, and these are just kind of one hole, so it doesn't particularly matter where they live. I mean, it kind of matters, right? Welcome back to the continuation of the continuation of the continuation. Eventually. Why eventually? Eventually it'll be done. Oh, well, yeah. Christmas will be here, too. <laughs> so where are we at? Will Sparky have a car running first? <laughs> We are one end mill chuck down because I did a bad and I used a drill press chuck to do milling and routing for a while, which I knew wasn't great, but it's a lot simpler to change out end mills on a drill press chuck than it is to change your collet size every time you need to do some milling. Why have we been milling, you might say? Because we've been making the brackets. Chonkers. So what has been engineered here is basically a two by two block with some nice bracing here to use some more two inch spacers here uh, to space the entire lower control arm down two inches um, to match the Forrester lift kind of adding to it actually, but uh, in, a, in a suspension correction geometry kind of way. So when we look at the rear of the car, the tire is obviously not supposed to be that far forward, right? It's, it's causing us clearance issues. Um, and we'd have similar alignment issues in the front by just putting struts in and not correcting the rest of the suspension geometry. So we're gonna be adding blocks to the rear. Um, some of which have been made, some of which have not been made, uh, some of which need to be refined a little bit. Um, but uh, yeah, one side is, I guess, done really, right? Because we got the fronts done. Yep. The rear lower control arm. So the, the front, the, the entire front suspension attaches with, I guess, technically 10 bolts. You have three for the rear lower control arm mount. And or so for the front lower control arm rear mount, there are three. And then um, the front subframe attaches with two bolts per side uh, and the, everything else attaches to the subframe. So here's the assembly. Basically, this is the factory plate here, the factory brace. Um, so just added two inches of space, used the stock stud into the bottom of the, uh, the this guy with the, with the nut there instead of threading into the nut in the body, and then we attach to the, you, you get it. I'm not gonna walk you through it, you got eyes. And that should drop everything down. It should correct our suspension geometry, allow us to get within reasonable tolerances for a camber caster and, well, toe, I get, toe we probably would have had an issue anyways. And then we're putting two inch blocks on top of that. Yes. Yes, so it's gonna be even bigger, bigger. Yes. Yeah. So this is a much needed to do to A, give us space to actually freaking do this, uh, to actually put the, the strut mount, the spacers on from Anderson Cup? Uh, yeah, Anderson Design. Anderson Design. And then... Uh, and we gotta make a steering knuckle too. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome back to Underwater Adventures of the Breakout Barn, where we make things that hopefully don't go underwater. Uh, but it certainly freaking feels like it. It is 9.30 and 940% humid with still 85 degree temperatures is disgusting out. It's so nice that we had that nice thunderstorm earlier to bring the humidity up. Yeah, yeah, it would have been really nice if it you know, cleared it out, but that would be too much to ask. What are we doing? We're doing more stuff on the same thing that this video has been about, but at a different time frame. So when we last left off, I think we talked about the front end already, right? Oh, we talked about it, but now the stuff's in there. Okay. Stuff's in there. <laughs> so we've got some uh, some beefy brackets, right? These these brackets are were pretty simple. These are the ones that we just milled out straight shots with, with extended bolts. Um, and then here in the back, we've got some more complex stuff. And that'll give us a total of? Five inches. Five inches. You heard it, ladies. A total of average. In the back, 
Sir Taco himself is in the process of zigzagging the rear end down. Uh, so spacer blocks are installed on this side. He is cur are you unbolting that side now? Uh, I am now putting this, the bolts into the body so that the spacer blocks can attach to the spacer blocks. Yes, so yes. spacer blocks on spacer blocks. Yes, and the spacer blocks that I'm bolting to the body are going to be welded together with some sort of bar so that they are strong. More stronger, more better. That's pretty much all the update. We'll get back to you when we got some stuff in the rear. More junk in the trunk. I lied. We have more stuff to do. Uh, one of the critical parts, and I, when I say critical, I mean actually critical, of this whole lifting guy is um, steering, right? So, and dog bone. And dog bone. Dog, yeah, I mean, dog bone's kind of easy though, right? Uh, we'll have to figure it out. I would say it's easier than the steering linkage. So, let me get some lights on in here. I'm in the one corner of the shop that doesn't have lights directly over it until I plug that in. So now we got lights. So, on ye old left, this is the stock 2011 Impreza Outback Sport steering linkage. This goes from the upper linkage down to the rack itself. It sits in the engine bay. On the right is a Forrester linkage. So this is a Forrester linkage. And we thought that this might be enough. And it's not enough. Yep, it is not enough. It is a little bit short. It needs to be more John Hale. Yes, it needs dab more of Senor Hale. If you're hearing this, then hit it with your purse. So our solution, I mean, there's a lot of areas here that we could extend this thing, right? There's one really obvious area that we think, and that's right here. This, this nice little shaft right here. Um, so the best that we can tell, this is, I, I mean, I think it's, I think it actually might not even be hollow. It doesn't look like it's hollow. It looks like it's pressed and welded. Um, so this shaft itself seems to be the easiest part of this to elongate. Um, we've got all sorts of compliance bushings here. And, and uh, I mean, this whole mechanism is just kind of wonky, right? So. We think what we're gonna do is chop this guy, find a thick walled tube that is pretty much an interference fit with this, um, cut some holes in it to plug it, and basically extend it that way. So, what are you gonna do with the old one? The old one? Yeah. Uh -huh. So we're gonna start with the old one, because that way if we screw up the old one, we can figure out that one. Oh, the old one was freaking screwed up anyways, sloppy and like bound up yeah so we'll cut the we'll cut the old one first and see what's on the inside and that'll give us a better idea of what we're going to do with this one it also allows us to take actually this one looks like it's thicker through the middle hmm. what? i think the uh the shaft on the forester one is actually beefier looking at using my eyeball rulers nice hmm. all right who isn't down with a little extra thickness here is the new Forrester bit, right? So basically what we did is we measured the OD of the solid section. Actually, we cut the Impreza halves and um, just to see, that, to verify that this was in fact a solid piece here. So um, this is the Forrester one. This Forrester shank is actually a larger diameter than the Impreza one is. Um, so we ultimately decided to do is put the Impreza one on the car, cut, measure the distance from flange to flange, and we came up with two and an eighth inch uh, is what we need. You know what? Did I fuck that up? Probably. We didn't account for the interior stubs, did we? What do you mean? Did I go to flange to flange or did I go face to face? I didn't measure, you measured it. Fuck. Measure once. Cut four times. <laughs> Burb. Okay, never mind. Just had to verify that I actually measured from the face of this flange to the, the top of this coupling uh, where this weld is actually instead of 
the distance between the two shanks after I cut them, two stubs. Uh, so what we have is a piece of high carbon steel. This is a blank that I just cut off of, uh, I don't know, some piece of scrap that I had kicking around. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to, this is a larger diameter than uh, than what this guy is, obviously, right? We got some, some heft here. So we're going to mill out the center of this um, on both ends here and um, not completely through, not turn into a tube, but we're going to mill out some recessed pockets to drop these shanks into. And then uh, we're going to burn the hell out of it and uh, make this one solid piece of metal in a straight line here. So over to the mill. Hello comrades, it is me, Tucker. Welcome to the breakout barn again, and again, and again. So we have progress. Two inch spacer blocks are installed on top of Forrester stretch. So we have five inches of lift on this bad boy. Car's not squatted, so the wheels are not centered. And it'll probably lose about five inches from here for clearance. What we did is we took Anderson Design Fabrication two inch spacers that are bolted on top of the struts. And we installed the four inch spacers on the undercarriage of the car here. So you have the two inch steel spacer that is bolted to the body. And there's a through bolt from the bottom through the subframe up to the aluminum block and bolting all that together. Forward and aft. And then here we have the trailing arm, which is bolted to two inch spacers and the one inch spacer from Anderson Design to fix our geometry on the car. And this side is not lifted yet up on the two inch spacers. That is coming next. And that's gonna be a lot of harumping and grumping trying to get it installed. More content later. Look at that! So dope. Rear end is done. Time for the fronts. All right, so Tucker here again. We've got cool stuff. The car is on the ground. That is a paint bucket for reference to how much clearance we have on this bad boy. Still needs to settle out once we roll it back and forth. And we still need an engine in there. Haven't finished the steering linkage yet either. I'm working on that. We need to figure out some exhaust hangers. And uh, that's it. It's almost midnight. I am uh, all picked up in here and I am getting the hell out of here. See ya! We're fucking tired. Day 633. I think we were at 749 last time. So we might be at like 812 now. This is the car that never ends. But there is light at the end of the tunnel. And this thing is going to take you to whichever tunnel you need now. Because it is redonkulous. And by redonkulous, I mean... It could actually be like the beginning stages of a donk. All you need is like... <laughs> An Oreo wrap and some 26s and... Oh, Jesus. <laughs> you guys want to see what Taco primarily has been busy doing while I've been traveling the world and uh, playing golf? This is where I assume you say yes. Otherwise, you probably stopped watching by this point because this episode is like fucking two hours long. Just fast forward through the whole thing. Yep. Yep, that tap the right-hand side twice... Of the screen 10 seconds at a time wow this is completely off the lift this is sitting 
sitting on its own weight with the motor in it. Positive camber. Positive cambered out. What's a caster? Toe screwed. But importantly, look at the difference in the tire center line between the two fenders. Or between the, the leading edge and the trailing edge of the fender, the wheel well, I should say. Um, all of that effort that we put in making dumbass brackets a million times over and then remaking brackets because I got a little bit janky with it at one point uh, has definitely paid off. This is, I'm not, I'm not even kidding when I'm saying the taco has just been flying through this the past two weeks. You've been here probably 50% of the past two weeks. I don't know what day it is. Yeah. <laughs> yep. My girlfriend hates me. What's a girlfriend? Yeah. She's like, I miss you. But it's 11.48. We set out with one goal in mind for today. Overcome adversity. Overcome like rotten pipes and coolant leaks yep. and spills. And Plastic welded air boxes. Custom battery tie downs. Moment of truth. Does the horn still work? Horn still works. Oh yeah. Yeah, you got no fuel leaks. You're still dry. Try it. It's up at the rail now. Yeah, I hear. I heard it. Why you do this? Blap it again. Try, try it again. Headlights aren't dimming. Did you reconnect everything on the starter? Pretty sure. You got the sense wire on it. Let's turn on some light. Huh? So let's shed some light on the situation. Even like it's gonna blow up. Oh, sense wire's fucking dangling on there. Oh, is it? Yeah, let's see. I put it on. Yeah. I might have knocked it loose while it's fucking around. It's on there now. Try it again. Yeah. Get your hands out of there. No, my hands are out of there. No. No. Am I starter dead? Hold on. Did it fire it again? Yeah. Yeah, the stator's firing. It's not spinning though. <laughs> so. Check the battery health because the battery's actually been out of this thing for like two and a half months at this point, right? Yeah, but it's not dimming the lights or anything when I try and start it. I think that's full battery. Uh, you know what? What? I was gonna say, I wonder if that terminal is just poop. Anticlimactic. You know what? No, that's just part of the course of the stupid car. Yeah. Good pop start it. Good pop start it. <sighs> I don't know if Sanders firing. Let's try hitting him with a fucking hammer. God, I gotta stop saying the F word. YouTube's gonna demonetize my already demonetized videos. Okay. Status report. We found the Statue of Liberty worth of crusty green copper on the uh, starter terminal cable for the wire, the main lug that went to it. So now we're gonna try it again, cause it's clean. It's 
running a fuck of a lot better than it was before. <laughs> Probably because it's not pissing fluids out of every orifice in existence. Also because of like 15 minutes ago when we replaced the spark plugs. Oh yeah. That was like 47 minutes ago. If we're talking video timeline purposes. the exhaust. there where the fresh air can take all the... Oh man, I wanted to get a video of it running. Oh, well then fucking fire it up. God, I keep saying the F word. Can't say the F word on YouTube anymore. What the front door? Yep. Just make it sound like... I'm gonna have to, that's what I'm gonna have to do. I'm gonna have to put like the, the Kid Rock radio edit over it. And I hope that people get that reference. Oh my God. This place is a disaster. Anyways, that's finally the conclusion of this episode. Next steps for the Taco President. I mean, this thing actually looks ridiculous. Like, that has got some heft to it. That's a heat shield rattle. So, next steps for the, uh, for the Taco President are going to be getting it on the road? Yes. Getting it on the road. Uh... And some sort of exhaust hangers because I use copper wire to hold it up in place for now because the only place that is bolted is the headers. Right. Everything else is gone. Right, because the muffler was the only other place that it was holding it up and the muffler is now... Yes. The muffler is uh, detached. And for some reason, the exhaust hanger that was by the carrier variant, the end of the transmission, is just... Not there. Gone. Yeah. Just gone. Yeah, it's not even bolted to anything. It's just not there. Um, so I figure we can do like a straight across hanger where we took off the heat shield yep. and just like bolt that straight up mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. and then put some sort of pipe on the back of this maybe with a can maybe not without a can I don't know we could always try it with without a can and then if you don't like it, we can add a can yeah. because without a can is easier than with a can uh -huh. and then drive it and then comes to dumb stuff, right? Yeah. Like skid plate, bang bar. Front bumper. Front bumper gets cut. Ye. Fenders probably get cut at some point. Ye. Floor pans. Ye. But for now, it runs and I need it registered so I can drive it. And then we can find out what else is wrong with it. Shh. So it happens. Yeah. So it happens. Pretty much. But I'd say it's a pretty successful $3,200 beater. Yeah, it's around there, like 32 to 35,000 of that just being fun stuff, making it big. Yeah. And that was actually, I mean, you saved much money by switching to Geico and making all of your brackets yourself instead of ordering them from other places. Yeah. So what was not pictured was a substantial amount of time on the mill. The mill has paid for itself over and over and over and over and over again. Um, so if you I don't... 
lots of photos of that on my uh, Instagram. Oh yeah. Taco Preza. Yep. There you go. New Instagram plug. Taco Preza. That'll be below in the in the um, the things description. Fumes are <laughs> fumes are starting to hit me. I need some ventilation in here. No, we should run the car and kill the squirrels. Oh, oh, that's a good point. And then we'd have to like run in here and open all the doors. <laughs> yeah, don't think a P100 is going to save me from that. So, as always, guys, thank you very much for tuning in. Um, stay tuned for more dumb stuff. Obviously, we've been neck deep in, in Willie as well. And uh, Willie should be on the road here, probably similar time frame to the Taco Preza. And then maybe we'll do some dumb stuff in the field. Okay. Who knows? Yeah. Hot girl summer. Let's drive it over some dumb shit. Yeah. Yep. Uh, so anyways, if you appreciate, you know, more dumb stuff, then please feel free to hit the like and subscribe and the comment and tell us that we're idiots and all that kind of stuff. If you have any questions about anything that we did to make <laughs> this Impreza five and a half inches taller, um, then please feel free to, uh, to engage there as well. And don't forget, more subscribers, more t-shirt giveaways and crap. So, cool beans. The sooner we get to work on the docks then. Yes. Yes.